we're going to cover checking your power supply voltage and your voltage reference on your drivers on your CR10 printer. Now this is applicable to any machine that has a standard control board with adjustable drivers and you can tell if you have an adjustable driver by looking at these little positive things here. They look like little pluses and these are how you adjust them. So we're going to go through adjusting these and checking these and then we're also going to go through adjusting the potentiometer here on the left side of the power supply. It might be different on yours but most power supplies have a little potentiometer here to adjust the output voltage. So we're going to start by checking the output voltage. So you're going to take your multimeter and you're going to turn it to the 20 setting here and then set this somewhere where it's not going to mess with anything. Flip your cover up here. Now be very careful. These three lines here on this particular power supply, these are your AC voltage. These can kill you. So be very careful. These three here, and you'll see it'll be marked V plus, V negative. These are your positive, and that's your negative. And you see here ground, neutral, and line. These are your AC. So to test your 12 volt, you're going to want to go ahead and put your positive on the V plus and your negative on the V negative. So black and red. And so your power supply is reading. You can see here we're reading 12.3 volts, which is fine. But if you want to up the current so your bed heats a little quicker, a lot of people do this on the CR10, you're going to take your screwdriver and put it in the potentiometer here, and you're going to slowly turn it until the voltage increases. You can see the voltage down in the lower right-hand corner there increasing. We recommend staying around 13.5. Any higher than that, you can strain your power supply a little more, and it's going to reduce the life. Because these will go all the way up to 14, but 13.5 is a good number to be at. So the next thing we're going to do is check the VREF. So you're going to switch your multimeter to 2000M, and then you're going to grab your ground from anywhere on the power supply. So now just for ease of use, this has an extra ground over here that's not occupied. So I'm going to take this screw, loosen it up, and I'm going to stick my ground lead from my multimeter under this tab and just snug it. So now I don't have to worry about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to probe on the very top of each of these potentiometers. Now be very careful not to touch any of the circuitry around any of this. So we can see X is set at 0.753 volts. Y is at 0.75 volts. Z is at 0.59 volts, which is really low for a dual Z system, which is what we're running. And then E is at 7.5. Now on the CR10 machine, 7.5 should be adequate for X and Y. But the Z you're gonna want, especially with dual Z, you're gonna wanna have it at around 0.9 to one. So you're gonna turn this clockwise and then check it. And you can see now we're at 1.1. So that's a little high. I'm gonna back it down. And depending on what drivers you have and board, clockwise may reduce the voltage or it might increase it. Just check and then probe. This is why you need a multimeter. So we're still a little high. We're gonna lower this down a little bit here. And just very, very small changes. So you see, I barely turned it, we're at 0.918. And we're gonna leave it because that's good for this system. This is a dual Z system, but we actually have the steppers wired in series, so we don't need as high of a current on our Z. If you're running parallel, you wanna set this to one, one volt on your Z so that you don't lose steps. But that's about it. If you have an S4 or an S5 or a printer with a larger bed, you're gonna wanna set your Y to around 0.9 if you're getting layer shifting. Um, your X should be good at, at 0.75. But again, if you're losing steps on any of your axes, then what you're going to do is you're just going to bump the VREF up a little on all these, and then it should get rid of that layer shifting you're getting as long as all the other mechanical components are working. So that's all you need to do to check your voltage. So we set our power supply voltage on here to 13.5, which will let our bed heat up a little quicker than 12. I do not recommend going over 13.5 because then you're going to put too much strain on this power supply and possibly the other components of the board because the capacitor is only rated up to 16 volts. And then we set all our VREFs. So that's what you need to do if you wanted to test your heater cartridge and thermistor. What you would do is you're going to take the multimeter 
and you're going to put it on 200 ohms if you're testing your heater cartridge because the heater cartridge should read anywhere from 3.5 to 4.5 ohms and then for your thermistor you're going to put it over to 200k because most of the thermistors on these printers are 100k thermistors so you want to have it on here and what these numbers mean is this is the maximum it will read so if you try to read a thermistor and your meter is only set to 200 it's just going to blank out here because it's over the limit you have it set to same thing for the voltage if i try to measure 12 on the 2000 millivolts what's going to happen is it's just going to blank out because it's exceeding the 2 volt limit so you're going to want it set for 20 on the 12 and then 200 or 2000 millivolts on your voltage reference and that's it so we're going to be actually selling these exact meters and ceramic tip screwdrivers these are great because if you accidentally slip which we've seen people do you won't short out your board but still you have to be careful with your probes these obviously have to be conductive to actually get the reading but i hope this video has been informative to everybody and i hope you guys get better prints because you got proper voltages set and that's it